It's finishing chapter four today. In chapter four, we spoke about the purpose of our being here. Correct? The purpose for us being here is to connect to Hashem. And the way to connect to Hashem is through perfecting ourselves, making ourselves better. And the way that we're going to make ourselves better is by observing God's commandments. That's what the Ramchal, Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato, that's the book we're learning. Um, he wrote a book, he wrote a lot of books. But this book that we're learning is called the Derech Hashem, which is probably the best entryway to his thinking, to his uh, philosophy, if we can say that he's a philosopher. And he has a very, uh, what I would say, a systematic presentation of Judaism. So we get to see the total picture. As opposed to, you know, most of the classes we deal with very, very minute things. And the question is, well, what's the big picture? So here, we're able to see the bigger picture. The bigger picture is that God created the universe in order to benefit, to give, to do good for His creatures. And he, in order for the creatures to receive the goodness, they have to connect to Him. And in order to connect to Him, you have to perfect yourself. The more complete or more potential that you have, that you have actualized, the closer you are to God. And the way to actualize your potential to reach a level of perfection is through the observance of the mitzvot, of the commandments. That's essentially what we've studied up to now. So he writes that in this world we have boundaries, and the boundaries are how do we use the physical world. And he says the following, that our function in the world, the way that we act in the world, Fallen into two parts. One is for us to follow what God commanded us. Okay? So God commanded us to do all sorts of things. Like what, Misha? What did God command us to do? To uh, keep the Shabbat. Keep Shabbat. He also commanded us things not to do, such as? Don't eat pig. Correct. Or, don't eat a cow that wasn't shechted correctly. Right? And he says then, but the second aspect is that we have to do what we, is necessary for us. That is to say, God created us made out of a body. And in the body he put a soul. And then he created two opposing forces. Those opposing forces pull us in different directions. You have something that's called Yetzirah, evil inclination, and you have Yetzirah Tov, good inclination. And they pull the person in two different directions. For example, one way, what's the pull for the good? Come to class at 3 o'clock. The bad pull, stay in bed. What are you going to go? You already heard. What else is he going to say? Do the mitzvahs, believe in Torah, God is king. You know, okay, big deal. What else is the rabbi going to teach? Right? You have two opposing forces. The soul, in order to choose the good, has to get the body to do what it wants. So if the soul wants to come and hear Torah, it has to send a message to the body, go to class. You go to class. You sit down, sit down. Keep your eyes open. Pay attention. Don't sleep. Don't play with your phone. Right? Stay focused. So the soul is trying to get the body, which is the tool that the soul uses, to perform whatever it wants. The same thing with the Yetzirah. If the soul says, the Yetzirah says, stay in bed, then the soul says just to the body, just do whatever you want. Okay? <clears throat> Under our responsibility, as far as God is concerned, we have a responsibility to fulfill His commandments, and we have a responsibility to do what is necessary for us. It's very important. That is, God wants us to use this world 
for our benefit. <coughs> but within the boundaries of the Torah. So God said you could eat fruit, but you have to, in Israel, give meiser, you have to hold shemitah, you have to pay attention to all the rules that are applied to it. God says you can eat meat, but it's a certain type of meat. It has to be slaughtered in a particular way, has to be prepared in a certain way. You can't just cut a leg of a cat and skin it and eat it, even no matter, no matter what. Now, certainly if a person is in a situation that they're starving, there's no food, okay, and he's going to die, that's a different story. Uh, we deal with that in a separate class. So the Maiseh HaMitzvah is the Tachlit Bo Adam Shehaseu. Shehu Lekayem Mitzvah Bo'o V'Lasot Chifzo. Really, that the ultimate purpose of a, of, for a human being is to fulfill the commandments of his Creator and do what God wants. And he does it in two ways. One way is that he does what the Kaddish Baruch Hu told him to do, the actual actions. God says, build a sukkah, right? So you could sit in it and make the blessings. So by you, to your body builds the sukkah. You are doing what God wants. Okay? And the second is that by performing the mitzvah or doing what God wants, you become a better person. You become a better person. So there are two purposes really behind the commandments. One, very simple, which is doing what God wants. God wants. God wants you to eat. You know, in the spring, God wants you to eat these crackers called matzah. He wants, that's what he wants. Now, the question is, is there a reason why he wants it? And that comes into the second idea. Yes, the reason you're supposed to eat it, because by eating it, you are perfecting yourself. And you say, how is eating a matzah perfecting myself? How is lighting Hanukkah candles making me a better person? That's why you're here in yeshiva to learn. The, the mitzvot were not just given to be given according to the Ramchal. They have a, a, a greater purpose, which is what? To perfect us. And by our perfection, we come closer to God. Got it? Got it? Everybody got it? Okay. So let's keep going. And he says, Masha mishtamesh min haolam Whatever God, the human being uses in the world for his own benefit has to follow the boundaries that were established by God. For example, God wants you to procreate, correct? But within boundaries. Right? The Torah tells us how to do so. You have to be married, you have to be in this situation, that situation. Everything that you want to use this world, you have to do it according to the owner. If you, it's like coming to someone's house. Can you use all their stuff? Usually you have to ask permission. Can I do this? So the person says, look, you could use this, but you know, just have to be careful about this and that and this and that. That's the idea here. So anything that God forbade or told us not to do, we should not do, because this is his world. It's his world. It's very simple. And, שלא יהיה אלא ראוי לבריאות הגוף וקיום חיותו על הצד היותר טוב. And that whatever we use in this world should be for the health of our bodies, because that's a very important aspect, because if your body isn't healthy, your mind is going to be affected. Your level of concentration, your level of, uh, uh, of thinking, of processing information, of collecting the data. Right? If you have a fever, you, you know, it's much harder for you to, to collect sensible data. You don't see as well, you don't, your smell, your taste buds change, all those sort of things. So he says, in order for we have 
a, re, a responsibility to maintain a healthy body in order to perform the mitzvahs. So we have to be very careful. According to the Rambam, in Shemona Prakim, and also in Mori Nevuchim, and in Chod Deot, in the Mishnah Torah, he talks about the necessity of maintaining bodily health. So you do need to exercise, you do need to watch what you eat, you do need to do all these things. There are rabbis who argue that smoking is not allowed according to Jewish law. It's a tricky, slippery slope, but you're right. The idea is that since we have uh, a requirement to maintain bodily health, and we shouldn't do anything that uh, is detrimental to our body's health. Yeah, you're right. Whether that is included as part of the 613 commandments or not, that's a separate conversation. <clears throat> but you could say that that is a prerequisite to everything. Because if you are going to live a lifestyle where you are putting your body in such a w bad situation that you're not going to be able to perform mitzvahs, it's a big problem. It's a big problem. Okay. So really the purpose, he says, Vayeh ha bo that the body should be ready. The purpose really is for the body to be ready, to use, to be useful to the soul to do what God wants. Right? It's like, imagine your, your body as a car. The car has to be ready to go, fueled with the right amount of oil, wind, windshield wiper fluid, the whole thing, so that if you want to jump in the car and drive, to shul, to daven, or to deliver meals on wheels, whatever it is, that you're able to do that. That's how you have to treat your body. Your body has to be ready to go to do God's will in this world. And if you are doing, living in a way that your body is not going to be able to do that, you're going to have a problem. You can appreciate that, right? It's very important. But the, see, the thing is about, you have to just understand this idea. And maybe I've, I've said it way too many times. Bernie will have to tell me. That we maintain our, our physical health not as a goal unto itself. It's not to win, you know, Mr. Universe contest or Mr. Health store, you know, man. <laughs> I don't know, whatever the, the term is. But the idea is because the body is the tool for the soul and that the body, the soul needs the body to perform the mitzvahs and that's really what we're doing. Okay? So it's not, now, if you say, well, in order for me to have the body ready to go, I have to exercise three hours a day. And I have to eat these special foods and this and that. And da, da, da. It turns out that really then now it's a goal unto itself. You know, this healthy body becomes, that is, you know, when people say you have to have a healthy lifestyle, okay, is that the goal or is there something else? The reason you want to have a healthy lifestyle is because you want something else. So some people say the reason I want to have a healthy lifestyle is because I want to live for a very long time. Why? Sure, Hashem longer. Ah, uh, then, Adraba, do it. But if a person says, because I just want to enjoy life, woohoo! <laughs> yes. What if the amount of time you put in to extend your life is pr exactly proportional to the amount of time of the extension? Or exactly the same, rather? <laughs> Well, if we believe that a person dies when because of his body not being healthy, then we need to have a serious discussion about what is the proper way to look at death in Judaism. Right? There are people who live a very healthy lifestyle and die young, and there are people who live a very unhealthy lifestyle and live a very, very long age. Okay, yeah, I'm sure Torah kept them alive. No, I'm just saying, he doesn't <laughs> live right. a lifestyle. No, no, but we're talking about that. We're talking about, really, the, the idea in the, in the Torah world. Everyone dies because of sin, right? 
or dies when they, they completed what they needed to do. Or when Hashem says, okay, you're done, come here. You know, there's, yeah, there's a story about that. I don't know if, um, where I heard it. Sin, completion, or finish. Sin, finishing your job, or because Hashem just decides. Yeah. So Moshe Rabbeinu hit, completing hit, completing his Absolutely. job. And, and Absolutely. Absolutely. And Hashem just decided, or just completed it? He completed it, and Hashem said, let's go. You're done. Because he hit 120, and because that's the No, one because one. he was supposed to bring them up to Eretz Israel. That was his role, to get them ready to go into the land. And then he got there. So he says, but I want to go in. He says, that's, you don't need to. That's not your, you, you did everything that I wanted you to do. You're fine. Don't worry. But I, I need the mitzvahs. I said, no, you've already perfected yourself to a point where you don't need it. You don't need the mitzvah of Eretz Israel to get you into heaven. You're in. Don't worry. That's the before Shim tell us. So. What? What kind of workout? He wandered in the desert. He wandered in the desert, yeah. Did he like no, lift but everybody up? Or is that like our own? He did yeah, every Friday, he made the whole Mishkan himself, right? Yeah. It's a pretty intense workout. Wasn't there something where like... Yeah, but remember, you can't do that without... Uh, if you think that this is because the guy worked out and he could bench 220, that's not... Uh, you think like Moshe Rabbeinu was doing push-ups every morning? He was a walk. And go, uh, 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 all right. <laughs> 539, 540. 613. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hit me. Come on. Come on, Aaron. Punch me in the stomach. <laughs> that's not, that's not, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Once a week, we had a pretty savage workout. Okay. That's maybe that's, if your body is on a low level, maybe that's the case. If you the more you the more spiritual you are, the more your body is lifted. Remember, so that he had a much higher. Oh, so it was nothing. Uh, I don't know. He's, he's a different. Uh, he could be. Remember, he could be out in Har Sinai with Hashem, for forty days and forty nights with no food, no sleep, no eating, no drinking. He couldn't say to God, uh, "Listen, I know we're in the middle of Baba Mitzia, but I gotta use the bathroom. <laughs> I gotta go." You know, could you just hold on to that thought? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It doesn't work that way. I mean, God is, is pumping him, you know, transmitting the whole Torah to him. You know, he can't say, like, can I get a hot dog, <laughs> you know, like with extra, you know, like chili dog, you know. Can I get uh, something, corn dog, there you got corn dogs here. It doesn't work that way. You can't, you, okay. That's what the Rambam, we saw that in the Kuzari also. Okay. So let's keep going. So when a person uses this world according to this way, then he would, he would find himself perfecting and getting higher, higher degrees of perfection or completion, and he would thereby get closer and closer to God. And that's the idea. Because it is also a mitzvah for us, Ben, to, to guard our body so that he could serve God. Right? So he says, you ask, why isn't it a mitzvah? Says the Ramchal, it is a mitzvah. It is absolutely a mitzvah for us to maintain a healthy body, but so that that's, this body could serve God. Okay? Question is, what if in order to maintain a healthy body, a person is reducing his level of studying Torah? That would be an interesting discussion that we could have. What? I'm having that discussion with myself right now. Yeah. I feel like, like, like otherwise I can't, can't concentrate. So the, the qu- I was going to share all day long, I was trying, my fitness level's getting less, I can't. But uh, you're not learning every hour of the day, are you? No, but when I first arrived, I was fitter and I was learning a lot so longer. We're, so why aren't you working out in the morning and in the evenings? Oh, no, I wasn't when I arrived. Yeah, yeah. I am oh, good. Active. And as you see that it's better for you. Yeah. Yeah, you put on a shear while you work. Yeah. But sometimes even you need to like get in the mode of, yeah. you know, so you have a break in the yeshiva from one to three. <laughs> then use that time to work out. I mean, none of you are learning every hour of the day. 
So there is time for you to do your push-ups, pull-ups, you know, I don't know, stomach crunches, leg crunches, whatever. I don't know what you guys do. I don't work out. I don't work out. Ah, but Rabbi, isn't it a mitzvah? Okay, fine. I'll get to it. I did walk once for a couple of... <laughs> <laughs> last week. I said to a friend of mine, we went, I said, let's just walk back. It's like, it's, a, you know, two kilometers. Let's just walk. We'll be fine. You walk from here back home? No, from here back home, that's going to be a long walk. I probably would get halfway before, you know, the cops pick me up. Because you're not allowed to walk by foot on the road from Yerushalayim to Tel Aviv. Yeah. You live in Tel Aviv? I live in Rehovot. But to get to Rehovot, you have to go down towards Tel Aviv and then make a left. Somewhere. Is it because there's a lot of Arab areas? What? Is it because there's a lot of Arab areas? No, it's just that it's not, it's not safe. When cars are going downhill very fast in Israel to walk on the side of a road, uh, I think that has nothing to do with Arabs. Has to do with physics. Yes, even in freeways, you're not allowed to. Even in America, you're not allowed to go up on a freeway and walk. Walk on a freeway. I found that out the hard way. Yeah, you, you get. Uh, you know, they'll stop you and put you in the back of the truck, car. And... Okay. All right. So now he says the following. <laughs> By us performing the mitzvahs and making ourselves better people, we make the world a better place. We make the world a better place. Not just human beings, but the world itself. All of the material world as more and more people become more and more spiritual, then the world becomes a better place. And I think today it's much easier for us to understand this idea than it was maybe a hundred years ago. Because we know that people who sort of don't live in the materialistic consumerism lifestyle, their carbon footprint is much smaller. And hence it has a positive effect on the environment, on the world, on everything. And we see that. Right? When you keep Shabbos and you don't drive 60 days out of a, of a year, it's very, very different than a person who says to you, you know, you should use energy light bulbs. Okay, I could, but my car is sitting in the garage for two months out of a year. What about you? Right? Somebody came to my house once and told me that Orthodox people are bad for the environment because you guys leave the lights on all Shabbos. So I said to them, but I don't drive for 60, months, 60 days out of a year. Some, days it's even, some years it's even more, depending on you know, two days Yom Tov and how it works. So I said, what's your excuse? You want to tell me that the Shabbos might use more electricity than you driving around? On Shabbos, so the person was. You got it. You should make like a book. What to say? Oh. <laughs> I'm good. I have a very good comeback. Uh, that thing, God, uh, they get me in trouble sometimes, but. But, yeah, comebacks. I don't. I'm not sure of. Bo Hashem. So he says, and a person yegbir adam be'atzmo. A person has to increase the love and the fear that he has for God. That's the idea. He has to love and fear God and he has to grow with that. And how does he do that? That through his observance and living in the world, he recognizes the unimaginable loftiness of God. Okay, that's a good way of saying it. You realize how God is utterly different than us. And you're simply at awe at his wisdom, his goodness, and all the things that God does. And you also focus to see how little we are, how really insignificant we are in creation. And when you think about how little we are compared to God and how much God cares for us, we come to a greater feeling of love and fear of God, which is what we need to do. And therefore, he says that when you, we will be able to curb our evil inclination and would be embarrassed to sin before God 
And we would desire to be like those who worship God all the time. And he says, these are really the ways that we can come closer to God. And by this way, we would purify the, our, our matter and allow our, our soul to, to shine. And that is the idea. And this is what causes us to go from one level to another. We move higher and higher and higher in uh, our uh, closeness to Hashem. Questions? Comments? Nobody has anything to say. Thank you. What? Thank you. Oh, I'm not done yet. <laughs> but I'll take a thank you anytime, Ben. Good job. Well, I have a comment. You have a comment. Good. I have a question. I have a question. Kadima. Uh, but I'm going off what Rabbi Kaplan says, because I don't remember what you said exactly. But to exalt in his praise and be exalted by his greatness, what exactly is that? That's, that's who, people who serve him are exalting in his praise and they're exalted. Yeah, they're lifted up. Right, they're lifted. They go from one level to another. They keep moving up in their levels of completion. That's exalt means to go up? That's how I understood the words. Ma'alim et adam mi'ilui li'ilui. Yeah. Going up and up. Yeah. From one level to another. That's the idea. Like, like a video game, sort of? Like yeah, yeah. Level. Correct. And each more. level, you can handle more, you're closer to Hashem, you have a better understanding of how the world works. Absolutely. That's love and fear? or is Love and fear. That is, is how you, um, you, those two are the, the tools to bring us closer to God through increasing our love of God and increasing our fear of God, they help us in purifying ourselves and moving higher and higher. So fear is a higher level than love? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. It just, he talks about those two. I'm not sure that we would have to necessarily be that love comes first and then fear. Can you make a metaphor for us for a video game? How love and fear fits into this video game? What is God the final level? Is love and fear like, the, like, are we made of love and fear? And we have to like, what is, you know, how does it all work? How does it all work? Yeah. What's the video game? Yeah, tell us the video game version. I, you, this, I can't, you, you want me to go into your head. I don't know what video games you're thinking of. Like, I don't know. Candy no. Crusher? I don't know. Like Mario is just like, you go, I don't know, you just go to the next level because you're a bigger Mario or you've done, you've killed Bowser and now you have to face a stronger Bowser or something. Or well, mushrooms you can collect and stars. Tetris. Is that the love and like the fear is getting hit by one of the No, guys. no, no, no. Love, love and fear is the motivation for playing the game. The game is life, okay. <laughs> so now he's like, okay, and my metaphor, so I have to take what, so love and fear are the motivations. What you're doing in the game is mitzvahs. So everything we're motivated by is either love should, and fear? Or? Should be. No. There's lots of other motivators that we have, which is, they're not good. Right? Like oh. when you're running around trying to find pistachio ice cream. That's not a good thing. That could be love of God, because I know that if I have that, I'll be a better servant. But what if God says you're not allowed to have pistachio ice cream because you just ate steak, and you're still running around trying to look for it? Then I don't have the proper amount of fear. That's right. So your motivation is wrong. Or it could be okay, so individual motivators are just a like a lower classification of whether it falls into like the category of love. This is motivator of love because I want to come closer and this and that. And the fear is that I the the, the love is mitzvot ase, yeah. okay. and maybe yira is mitzvot lot ase. But I could also hear that it's not so neat that yira is also mitzvot ase because you don't want to be mevatel. Uh, mitzvah ase. But those are the motivators to playing the game. And the stronger your motivation is, the higher you're going to go in the game, right? Because yeah. you're going to try harder. Yeah. You're going to jump higher over those stupid barrels and hit the ducks in the head. I don't know. Was there something hitting in the head? Boxes. Boxes? You, you get in like the mushrooms mysteries. come out. And they fall. Yeah, okay, good. So. Sometimes they were coins, sometimes they were mushrooms. Yeah. You said, uh, you said to be a better person, you do the 
mitzvahs, are there certain things that the mitzvahs can't cover? Like, can you do all the mitzvahs and still be a bad person by mm. the way you interact with people? So, but but in that sense, you're not keeping other mitzvahs. Okay. The so mitzvahs so the 613 mitzvahs would cover it. Would cover it, and if you are doing it with the right motivation, and you're doing it the way that the rabbis tell us, the way that the Torah tells us to behave, you will be a good person. However, there are people who say, we're going to keep these mitzvahs, but these ones and we're not going to pay attention to. That is, treating people badly is against the Torah. There's a mitzvah in the Torah to be happy. Do you know why? Happiness is infectious. Okay. God wants us to be happy. Why? Is this the best way to, the best way to serve a child? It's not only that. It's because if when you are not happy, you treat other people terribly. Right? If you're in a bad mood, do you treat people nicely? Yes? yes? Even when you don't want to? Yeah. Good for you, Ben. Mm-hmm. You get the Angel of the Year award. But most people don't. Most people use foul language, get off of me, leave me alone, what are you bothering me for, snapping, and gets worse and worse and worse. But according to the Torah, you can't do that. You can't treat people badly. So, in a sense, if someone is truly following the Torah, they can't be. But there are people who keep some aspects of the mitzvahs, and not others, and hence they keep they you know they keep Shabbos, they eat kosher, they go to shul, they learn Torah, but then they treat other people miserably, um, you know. So yeah, you could be a scoundrel, but that's not what the Torah wants, certainly. Yeah. If you don't have love and fear for Hashem, can you still serve Hashem? I mean, can you still? Yeah, but it's much harder to. Because you don't have the good motivators. Right? I mean, it's a, it's a relationship. When you have a relationship with somebody, right? Bernie's going to meet a nice, beautiful Jewish woman, Amen. right? The motivator is that he has feelings for her, that he wants to do stuff for her. All the stuff that he does is based on the motivation. One is that he fears that he doesn't want to make her mad. And he wants her to be happy, so he loves and he does what she, what she wants, not what he wants. Is the first step always a selfish motivation? No, says Rav Desla. He says, no, we should get to the level that we want to give rather than take. Right, but the, but the, original, the original action, like... The original use. action in the universe was the creation of potentiality by God, which is an act of giving. And human beings, as he said, when they are born, they are very much engrossed in materialism. And when you are engrossed in materialism, you take. Baby needs takes all the time, right? Once, once, once. But But the goal is, says Rav Dessler, is to get to a point where you're at least taking as much as you're giving. Or giving as much as you're taking. Right, you get to a point, but that's. But building, you should get building, even higher. Right, but that's building up to it. So my question is, when you meet a girl, you say, "Oh, I like this girl." But the question is, why do you like this girl? Why do you like this girl? Is it because you're going to be good for her, or she's going to be good for you? Are you are you are you looking at it from the point of view of this is going to be good for me? You say, "Oh, you like her for all these reasons," but really, it's for you. It's a selfish reason. Yeah, you know, and then you work up. But to it's the, not. A, you work up to but the here's point so where you, I'll change you one word that you said. The reason that I want to be with her is to fulfill the mitzvah of the Kaddish Baruch Hu. So, so you take in order to give. Or you could say, the reason that I think this would work out between us is because I want to give you as much as I can. Not because I want to take from you, it's because I want to give you. Because you're the type of person that I see my giving as much as I can. It's a little too mushy. Let's stop here and continue uh, next time. (laughs) 